Uh, Monday, September 24th, and we're going to get into irony, uh, which is like knees made of metal. Uh, let's see, Book Report is doing nine days. For those of you at home slacking, realize the fact that you've not even started your book yet. You're going to be in trouble. Uh, plus, you don't have the option of not turning it in, because I will beat you with your Book Report until it's turned in. Uh, also, this week's quiz story is already on my website, so if you're wanting to read it to make your life easier, that's fine. It is a little shorter than last week's, but I figure I'd still offer it up to try and give you guys time. And for the tie game this week, your hint is, is not Star Wars. Star Wars will never be an answer for the entire year unless I have an entire week of asteroids battling each other, uh, which I do not have, so we don't have to worry about that. So your bell work for today is called My Iron Knee. It is entry number seven. Which, by the way, which page number did it probably go on? 12. 14. For most of you on page 14. 14. Or, you know, knowing how numbers work and stuff like that. For your bell work, there are three parts to it. For the first part, you were just writing that definition down word for word, so now you have an idea of what our definition is to try and make your life better. Part two, you're just going to fill in the blanks in this chart. You can either write down the chart and then fill it in, or you can just fill in the little fill-in parts. You get to use all of this come time for the quiz and homework, so the more you have on there, the more it makes your life easy, but maybe, once again, you hate future you, and then you want to make it challenging. I really understand that also. And the bottom part, you're going to come up with your own two examples. I'm fully expecting you to probably mess this part up, and then most definitely mess this part up. Some of you are not going to mess it up because you have some idea of what you're doing. Go, you responsible people. If not, and you do mess it up, that's fine. That's why it's a bell work. It's where you're supposed to mess things up. So our definition of irony. The use of words to express something different from and often the opposite to their literal meaning. A difference between the expected result and the actual result. So it's where you're expecting a thing to happen and it's sort of like a twist or the opposite of what you are expecting in one way or another. There are different forms of irony. Visual irony, which is a picture of a thing which we're going to get to, which is the opposite of what you expect in the picture is happening. Um, and then there is dramatic irony, which we're going to get to in our story for this week, uh, where it builds up to this one thing happening, and then the opposite of what you're expecting eventually happens. Then you also have verbal irony, which is where you say the opposite of what you mean. Uh, I use verbal irony with you guys all the time. Uh, do you know what the best example of verbal irony is? Sarcasm. Sar Good job. I'm so proud of you. And so that would be an example of sarcasm, uh, where you say the opposite. It only works if kids actually understand that you are speaking sarcastically. Because if a kid is dumb, it is an epic failure. Because when the kid doesn't do their homework, and I go, so proud of you, genius. I'm like, oh, thank you. I'm not going to do my homework ever again. And I'm like, that's not what I meant. It's okay. And I'm like, Ugh. and so today, I'm going to teach you how to understand my sarcasm. So when I make fun of you, it makes sense. Because there's nothing more frustrating as a teacher than when I mock a student and it goes right over your head. So today we're going to set you up to understand all of my mocking of you for the rest of the year. You do care about us. <laughs> no. Ah, going down to our charty bit that we're going to fill in from there. This is not really irony, but it's getting you moving in that direction. It's your little wobbly irony bike. As I go running along next to you and you're trying to figure out how to work the pedals and get the balance down. We're going to see how it goes. So the expected result, what is it a fireman does? Say single for fire. Works for me. I put stops fires. The opposite of the expected? Start starting a fire. fire. Now, starting a fire, not ironic. But you're in the right direction. I put catching on fire. That's a bit more <laughs> ironic, but we'll get there. Uh, and if your thing is not ironic, that's fine. It's, it's, it's okay to mess it up. You can put, you can put, catches a squirrel, that's fine. It doesn't actually make it ironic. I'm just trying to get you in that right direction. What does a dare officer do? Teach about, uh, about jump balance. Says, and don't do drugs. Yeah. The opposite of expected? Does does drugs. drugs. One, you should not be so excited when you yell at me. Does drugs. 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 That does not come do across drugs. Drugs. on the video. They're like, did his crazy yell do drugs? It sounds excited. Do drugs. No. Um, once again, him criminal. doing drugs, not quite as ironic, but if you were to find out that he gets caught for a DUI, the driving under the influence, well, that would be closer to the whole irony part. Yeah, so, I said being a criminal. which you have is not necessarily ironic, but in that direction. <laughs> what is it a dentist does? Cleans teeth. Cleans teeth. Cleans teeth. Cleans teeth. Uh, should prevent cavities in some way. The opposite? Yeah. He's a candy junkie. Yeah. So, of anyone you know who should have good teeth, 
it should be a dentist. But if you find a guy who has really bad teeth and then find out he is a dentist, that would be ironic. Just like if you find out someone who has really bad hair and their hair is cut and like all like chunks and hanging off and like the worst style ever, and you're like, what do you do? They're like, I'm a hairstylist. You're like, oh. I'm sorry. that would be ironic, the opposite of what you expect. And what is it a normal English teacher does? Edgy McKay! Yeah, Edgy McKay is kind of generic. I was going to go uh, teach his words because of all the educating we could do, that would be the most of all of them. That and then the, the opposite of that... Doesn't doesn't talk. Doesn't talk. I own name, but once again, all the other ones could work from there. Emerson? Kai Borb is kind of a misspelling. Sort of. It's just spelled backwards. Nate? Can I do my example? You may not, but a good try. We're going to come to the examples later. I'm going to do some more with you. And then once you feel fully trained, then you're going to go back and take a look at your examples and we'll go from there. Yes? My opposite of expected um, was only speaks a different language. I said Spanish. Well, that could work too. Not ironic as much, but would definitely be the opposite of expected. It's ironic if they only speak Spanish. It's an English teacher who speaks Spanish. I'm well aware of it. It is so... What you're going to have a lot of times when we get into irony is the issue you're going to have is what, you ha what you're going to come up with is just unfortunate as opposed to ironic. Ironic is a art form that we're going to get to to try and help you out. So an English teacher that only speaks Spanish is not ironic, it's just weird. Uh, but once again, we'll get to the whole teaching of that. So what I have, this next part, you don't have to write down unless you've not done the red part. Then you can steal some of them. Because the idea is at least stealing them is better than not doing anything at all. But I'm going to run you through a whole bunch of examples. The idea is just trying to teach and educate you. All right, our first one. I found a maiden. A lot of these are going to come from my actual life experiences. I just keep adding to them as I keep going to my ironic life. But the Made in China sticker. And so I found one of these Made in China stickers on the 4th of July when I was at a parade with my daughters. And so I was like, oh, where I found it ended up being ironic. So that's where we use our first example. Where would I have found that sticker? On, the US US on one of those flags. And it was on the little U.S. flags. They hand it out to kids to wave on the side. Like, <laughs> they wave them back and forth. And they're like, hold this for me, Daddy. And I was like, okay. And I'm holding it. I was like, What's I looked down like, made in Seriously? And so our little American flags were made in China. So I was like, that'd be ironic. And then I had a kid point out something about the stickers. They go, Mr. Broviak, where do they make those stickers? And I said, well, that'd be ironic. <laughs> so where would you expect them to be made? China. But if we find that there's like a big sheet that's like made in Singapore, and you're like, <laughs> uh, so that'd be rather ironic if they're not made in the place that she would expect. Then we go to, if we find out the company president of Chevrolet. Can't drive. Can't drive. Can't drive. not where I was going, but that could be an drive area. Some Porsche. There you go. Drive some fancy car like I was going to put a Ford. But Porsche, Mazda, you would expect that if you own the company, Tesla. you should definitely... Good, good job. You know car names. I'm so proud of you. Mustang. JMC. Mustang would be a Ford. A golf car. Good job. Can we find out the employee at Microsoft? Well, it helps if you wait till I get done talking. The employees of Microsoft using... Apple! Nicely done. And so that'd be ironic, once again, being at the back of their arrivals. Samsung. Sprint. Right. Sprint is uh, this comes from two actual kids I had in class, and so I had Joy a girl I had a girl named Joy, what? and I had a girl named Delight. But being but also, they are both sad. And so they both had issues in different ways. Uh, Joy, who I had first, was the kid that never smiled in class. Uh, was always was this that that grumpy one, you know, just always wearing black. I don't know why your parents name you Joy if they're just cursing you for life. Uh, but that was sort of what she went through. And so when we got to this one, this was actually pointed out to me by students because we were going through all my different irony examples. And I was like, so, like, that's what we expect. Like, oh, and I had a kid go, you mean like Joy? And I looked over and she's like, eh. And I'm like, yes, like Joy. And so I was like, ah, oh, congratulations, you're going to get added to my lesson. And she was like, eh. And so I'm like, you're such a lovely dear. Uh, and then after that, I had a girl by the name of Delight. Uh, and Delight was in my first period class, and Delight was our school bully. Uh, she was not a big kid, but she relished the beating of other children. Uh, and she got in trouble on a regular basis. And so I remember when we got to this same part, and I just told the story about Joy. And, like, and we had Joy, who was the complete opposite of her name, and she was an example of irony. 
And without thinking, I kept going. I look around, and all the kids like kept looking over, and I'm like, who are they all? And I saw Delight like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, <laughs> guess who gets added next year? And so I added her in the next year, and it was kind of weird because the next year I was like, I know an eighth grader named Delight. And I'm like, yeah, I bet you do. Uh, so I'm always expecting some year to have a kid be like, my aunt's name is Delight. I'm like, I'm sure she's a wonderful person. Uh, so once again, your example of irony. Labor Day. Uh, do you guys know what the word labor means? Work. 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 How do we celebrate National Not Work Day? Work. 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 So we celebrate National Work Day by taking that day off. All right. Working is so much fun. Let's not do it. Uh, <laughs> so, once again, ironic. Uh, I have kids who really like to talk in the sound of their own voice. And so I find it ironic that there's a unit we have coming up in the wintertime, like February. But these kids tend to hate the most, which would be the opposite of what I would expect is correct. Our speech unit that we eventually get to. Yes! And for some reason it's the kids who lose the most points for talking complain the most about giving speeches. I'm like, you talk all the time. They're like, I know, but kids are looking at me. I'm like, they're looking at you when I charge you points. I know, but I'm like, standing when they look. I'm like, you're just a strange child. And so it's the same idea. Drive carefully sticker. Another one that comes from an actual story. So, I was driving to the Walmart that's up in Noblesville one day, and I pull up behind a car at a stoplight, and the back end of the car looked like Godzilla had reached out and gone, Kr! and just smashed the back of it and like, pushed it on its way. So as I pull up to the back of it, I could see like there was something on the bumper all ripply in there, and I was like, what? I was like, what am I? And I kept getting closer and closer. I was like, oh, that's a drive carefully. I was like, that's ironic. And I'm like, for my kids, I'm like, I'm going to take a picture of it. So I got my phone out, and I was like trying to do like the little zoomy zoomy thing in there. The light changed. The car took off. I was like, oh, no, you don't. And then I took off after, and I was like trying to like drive, holding up the phone. I was like trying to zoom in, uh, and then it hit me. How incredibly ironic it would be if I rear-ended a car while trying to take a picture of a Drive Carefully sticker. <laughs> so I put it away and I was like, it's not worth the sacrifice of my own life for you guys. Uh, but it inspired the story. But yeah, I don't want to try. And apparently it's creepy driving behind a car trying to take pictures of it. So I decided not to and they kept going. I was like, I couldn't keep driving after them, but that seemed even more creepy. Uh, but it gives you the idea of the back of the car had drive carefully, but it looked like someone had, like me, had <laughs> rammed in the back of it trying to read their sign. Next up, you guys know what a phobia is? Yes. yes. So if we have the president of an airline who? Has a phobia. Height. Leading. Is, I, my thought was height, but I guess you could do flying also. Leading. He's like, find out that he does not want to uh, be like on a ladder. Because he is like, I have a fear of heights. Like, but you run an airline. He's like, that's different. That's an airplane. Like, mm -hmm. So that'd be an example of irony. Another real life example, because we had a teacher here, although she moved over to Riverside a couple years ago, but her name was Mrs. Music. And it was ironic because... She taught math. She taught math. Not that. She was a science teacher. Uh, which is not completely ironic in and of itself, but she also would not sing. Because like whenever we have like we have uh, like talent shows and stuff like that, I'm like you should join us for singing. She's like, I can't sing. I'm like, your name is music. She's like, I married into the name. I'm like, okie dokie. Uh, but the fact that she taught science and didn't sing, I was like, that's rather ironic. It would have been perfect if her name had been Mrs. Music and she taught music. I actually knew a guy by the way whose last name was English, Mr. Mark English, and he was not an English teacher. I tried pointing out the irony to him too, but I don't think he enjoyed it. Real life story for you. Uh, Ka. Could be. Uh, I don't remember. I didn't actually oh, ask yeah, her. I remember. Yay. Yeah. Yay, what a happy he day. <laughs> and like and that one lady before him. Oh, my gosh. She I got know. mad at me because I pointed at a kid, too. I was like, I'll see you in my office. Like, <laughs> right. So, another story. So, from there, the the I Heart Kids, like that one, leaving a different day. I really like Walmart. But a different day, leaving the Walmart that was up in Noblesville, and I pulled up next to a car, uh, and it had the little I Heart stickers, the little triangle thing, and the little uh, triangle diamond thing in the window. And my first thought was, I love kids also. Uh, and I was looking over at the kids over there, and when I saw both of these two kids in the back seat, and you couldn't see them through the little fa hazy fog, because the mom and dad in the front seat's like... And smoke was like rolling back in waves into the back seat. And the two kids like had their little faces pressing against the crack in the window, like, <gasps> like little fishes, like trying not to die. Oh my and I was gosh. like, ah, oh, that was my thought. And I was like, oh, 
you are killing kids. <laughs> I'm like, I understand now. And I'm like, that'd be great, once again, thinking of you guys, for irony. So I got out my phone again to try and take a picture of it. But apparently, that's creepy. Uh, when you're leaning over trying to take a picture, and all of a sudden, both the mom and dad turned to look at me, and I was like, Ew. I just put it down. I was like, not turning, not turning, not turning. And then Susan Light, I was like, Aah! and I went the other direction. I was afraid they were going to come at me, bro. Uh, but imagine I, the, me actually getting the picture off before I finished and me not being too creepy. Another real life story. Uh, I play basketball on the weekends here quite a bit. I currently have a gorilla knuckle because I jammed my finger yesterday. It's like all tight and doesn't That's move. That's what I did. Uh, it's the best thing ever. Uh, but there was a guy who showed up a couple years ago to play basketball, and I was like, he had. You, like the giant NBA tattoo like down his shoulder and I was like that's super impressive and it turned out to be ironic why he hated basketball not hated he basketball really bad. he was awful at it I'm like who gets an NBA tattoo when it was like he'd like lay it and he'd like bang he would go off the side and he's like get the ball get the ball get the ball <gasps> whiff and I'm like what is wrong and so I wanted to point out to him the fact that his tattoo was ironic but he was kind of scary looking uh, and so I chose not to. That's not his arm. That is a random Google arm. Because once again, apparently it's creepy if you go, can I take a picture of your arm to teach my kids about how stupid you are? That does not go over as well as you might think. So you'll just have to use your imagination there. Cuss. That's not even the NBA logo. That's like Air Jordan. Like yes. backwards. Yeah. So once again, not everyone's real smart. Nate. <laughs> so you're on a two-lane road, and there's a truck in the right lane that says keep left. And then one in the left that lane thought. that says so do not So now play. we have our visual representations of irony. Oh, yeah. And so for these, I'm going to show you pictures. <laughs> <laughs> What's ironic in our picture? What is ironic in this picture? Fire. Oh, fire. 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 And so, Mr. Brody, they're just putting out a fire. Which is what firemen do. You are correct, except for where the fire is located. So that becomes ironic. Our right, next one. <laughs> now it is fireworks. What do they call their fireworks display? American, American freedom. freedom. And where do we find our American freedom? China. China. So, making fireworks American. in China not ironic. Calling your fireworks display American freedom that makes it a bit more ironic when it says made in China. Made in <laughs> making a crayon in Mexico not ironic. But then what do you call it? The American crayon. That's what ends up making it ironic. <laughs> so one, it's not ironic to have a crown called the American crayon. And it's not ironic to make crayons in Mexico. But when you make your American crayons in Mexico, then it becomes ironic. Yes. Why is the A lowercase? I have no idea. Probably, you should buy, but they capitalize the M in Mexico. How dare they? Riot, riot! Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Our next one is... Shout rebellion! <laughs> oh my god. This one <laughs> is. Dog chewing it up, but he's trying to be trained. And it's a dog training video, and. Hey, there you go. And. <laughs> <laughs> what is that bottle supposed to do? It's it's supposed to not that it. And so, yeah, you're supposed to spray it on things to prevent the dog from chewing stuff, but apparently it tasted. Either know that, it either tasted delicious or the dog was trying to kill it. Uh, one or the other. Either way, win win. And here? I can't even see it. Oh, today oh, you're two and warning three small years and under. Not for children under three. Nice and under. So not for children under three, but it's made for a two-year-old. <coughs> ironic. Found at a protest about people coming here from Mexico. And he used R is wrong. Wow. Is correct. So the idea that they're saying respect our country, speak English, and they can't even speak English themselves. Rather ironic with your protest. So I thought that was a little on the ironic side. Why do they have a, like a hyphen between? When you're going to commit to stupidity, <laughs> go all the way. So this one has a couple parts to it. Found a can called mango juice. At the bottom of it says mangoes are a natural source of vitamin A. So how much vitamin A should it have in it? Mango. Uh, well, what are you expecting? 100%. There you go. Then you get in there on the other side. If you can't see it very well, we'll zoom in. And it says vitamin A. Zero. So, kind of the opposite of where it says today. You take this one? So 
what I already hear is. Company. Your smile has arrived. The sliding door company and it doesn't even have sliders. Nice done. Their company is known for sliding doors, but to get in, no sliding doors. Burger sauce. That's not even a burger. There you go again. It says burger sauce, but down below, it's just a sandwich, not a burger. It Maybe it makes it taste like a burger. That's why you put it all. I don't know. You can't read oh, that. What does that say? It's lady cats. <laughs> what does that say? Give cyclists space. And it's in the cycling lane. lane. And so the idea that this is your bicycle oh, lane. I read it. And it says make sure you're giving bicyclists space. <laughs> you have given them no space at all. Like the one that says kids who have piled stuff on top of their desk have already lost points. Ironic if you don't already have a lot of them. It helps if you know what this word means. Do you guys know what illiterate means? Illiterate. Not able to read or write. Or cannot or read or write. The only word they spelled correctly? Illiterate. The one that means you cannot read or write. <laughs> <laughs> wow.